Irish potatoes are the second most consumed staple food in Kenya. They are generally grown in the high altitude areas in 15 counties on rain fed land where they compete favorably with maize production. 800,000 people in Kenya directly benefit from own potato farming production while potatoes provide a source of income for over 2.5 million people employed in the value chain. 90% of potatoes are grown on small holdings on less than 0.5 acres of land. Potatoes are therefore an important food crop for food security as well as an important cash crop that contributes to the country's gross domestic profit. Kenya's demand for potatoes is increasing annually, while there is a general increase in the land area that potatoes are cultivated on, total national production has remained steady or declined over recent years with much lower yields per hectare being achieved now than in 2004 and 2007. This is according to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. The government aims to increase potato production from 1.6 million tons to 2.2 million tons by 2022 in its efforts of ensuring food security. This will be a hard nut to crack owing that most farmers in the country lack clean certified potato seed. Before we delve in deeper, let's first describe the Irish potato. A fun fact is that Irish potatoes are not Irish at all. The shrubby perennials with edible tubers, grown as cool weather annuals in rows, raised beds or containers are native to the South American Andes, though introduced to the world by early European explorers only in the past 400 years, the starchy tubers quickly became one of the world's most important and nutritious foods behind only corn, wheat and rice. All parts of the plants are toxic if eaten, except for the properly harvested and stored tubers. With that in mind, most farmers get their potato seeds from the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALGRO, and other research institutions. Getting the right seeds is key in potato farming as diseases are the biggest headache for farmers and take a huge toll on yields. <laughs> Calro frequently organizes open days to educate farmers on the best varieties to plant in the different potato growing regions in the country. We have someone who is. There are 13 major potato producing counties in Kenya. They include Nyandarwa, Meru, Nyeri, Kiambu, Taita Taveta, Nakuru, Narok, Bomet, Elgeo Marokwet, Franzoia, Bungoma, Wasengishu and West Pokot. The open days normally is to enable people to appreciate what Calro is doing, how we develop our materials, how we, we even develop the seed uh, propagation, how we multiply the seed so that they can know and understand the high technical uh, aspects of our generation of the different varieties uh, because normally people don't know and then they don't appreciate. They, they'll just see a variety out there with the farmers, but they don't even know where it came from. And uh, sometimes we are working with seed companies, they think it is the seed company that is giving them the seed. And so Calro does not get uh, any credit for it. Yet most of the work and activities on research and development of those varieties, or even the breeds is coming from, from Calro. So this is just one way of uh, making sure that farmers know, like now when you walk around, you are seeing uh, variety development, different varieties, and even dealing with some of the national problems, like now the potato seeds nematode, you are able to, uh, to appreciate, because it is a serious problem. Farmers like seeing, some, when you see something has been advertised, we rush there, because we don't know what new has come. It's good to, to go there and then know what new variety or the new, uh, how you're going to grow the other crop or whatever crop it is. It's a very good thing that all farmers, everybody has come here with his own wanting to know. Nobody has been called uh, like you're being forced to go. It is you. you. You have the initiative in you and you want to grow. 
So whenever we hear there's uh, an, an open, uh, open uh, ground, we usually like coming to see and we learn more. It's a very good thing. Mm. And this should continue, maybe often. Every farmer looks for tricks to better potato farming in Kenya. Most Kenyan farmers started with potato farms having been told of the huge profits in the market. The truth sometimes is hard to bear given the fact that despite potato having high yields, that is not always the case in every harvest. During my planting, there's a this way of how we've been doing fertilizer has not been, it's not the correct way. So today I was taught how to do fertilizer well and the process of how to do it. So that is definitely what I'm going to try in my next planting. The biggest challenge uh, number one, brokers. Brokers at Farmgate, they have very horrible prices that uh, make uh, farming not a viable venture. That is the biggest one. The second one is weather. Weather has been very unpredictable for the past two years. So you, 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 never, you, you, cannot, you cannot rely on rain fed weather anymore. So we need to change and see how we can do irrigation. Kenyan potato farmers grow different seed varieties including Karibu, Tigoni and Sangi. Each variety does well under different climatic conditions and is ideal for various markets. An example is the exporting frozen chips prefer to grow the Tigoni variety because it is preferred by the export market and is easy to cook. Depending on the type of potatoes, they have different functions meant for them. We are actually feeding into the big four agenda because we are trying to give the farmers the best varieties that can give them the best output in terms of yield because yield is the is like the birthday uh, birthday child for the you know for the farmer. So farmers would want, even if you have a highly resistant variety, good chipping quality, high, you know, t good table uh, variety, if it is not high yielding, they will not pick it. So everything we are doing, we have to reason, it has to resonate well with the farmers, because farmers are our end users for the product. The importance of planting the right and tested seeds is so as to avoid infestation of pests. Mid this year, the infestation of potatoes by the potato cyst nematode, a deadly pest that was discovered in the country two years ago, was said to have reached alarming levels. A survey done in 20 counties through the support from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, showed that potato cyst nematode infestation had reached 80% to 100% in some of the potato growing areas across the country. The study showed that the future of potato production was bleak unless the government took emergency measures to stem the rapid spread of the devastating pests. Caro continuously develops uh, new varieties depending on the changing needs of the market. You have mentioned some old varieties like Shangi and Tigoni, which farmers started expressing needs, uh, opinions about them, and they now desire to have new varieties. So we have in the pipeline at different stages towards release of different candidates. Uh, we have four candidates in the national performance trials which are mandatory tests performed by the national agents called uh, KEFIS. So those ones are in the very advanced stages towards release. Similarly, we have others which are in advanced uh, selection stages, which are today highlighted and farmers and other stakeholders have had an opportunity to have a look at them because of the different attributes, the yield, the plant height, the size of the shape and the color. Uh, eventually we will also uh, get them to be tested for test culinary aspects. And then uh, the few that will be selected will then be put through the, the release pipeline. So we have four in the national performance trials and over 100 which are being selected and are in very advanced uh, selection stages. According to experts, potatoes should not be planted continuously. If a farmer plants the potato in one season, that piece of land should not be under potato cultivation the next season. 
This is to reduce the chances of the disease and improve soil fertility. We will take a short break now. When we come back, we will look at the processes involved in potato seed multiplication and what new practices farmers are implementing in order to reap good profits from a venture that has been dogged by brokers. Thank you.